G'day folks, welcome back to the vlog. We're back in Sydney. We've just done a trip back down from Queensland. Uh, just getting Billy, Land Cruiser behind me, ready for tomorrow's clip. What we're actually gonna do is show you how to service some tips and tricks. Just trying to get a little bit of light out of my eye there. Got a beautiful sunset behind us just about to happen so what we're doing is we're going to take Billy into Thornley Motor Repairs my mechanic Alex we're going to get a service done we're going to give you 10 tips and tricks on what to do when servicing an 80 series Land Cruiser and what to look for so just a quick run over the 96 80 series we've done a couple of videos which I'll link in the description below already so you can catch up on where we're at so what we're basically doing She's a rescue, and we've been slowly restoring her over the last year or so. So, we've had quite a bit of work done to it, mostly internally and underneath the bonnet. And tomorrow we're going to show you how to go through and do a full service on the actual truck itself. So if you're doing it from home, it might save you a little bit of money, or what to look for, or what to ask for when you go into a mechanic. So I hope this helps. Check out the links in the description below for the previous videos. And we'll head over to Alex in the morning and we'll get some servicing done on the truck and some tips and tricks for you. Um, I've recently gone down the rabbit hole of TikTok and I must admit I'm quite enjoying it. It's just cool to lay in bed and just scroll through. I skip over all the negative stuff and the Karens and all that sort of shit but it's just fun to see people dancing or whatever they're doing the comedy routines and just being happy and having fun and there's one piece of like audio that people do stuff too which i absolutely love and it goes a little like this time to do some sketchy shit do da do da time to do some sketchy shit hope i'll get away with it do da do da time to do some sketchy shit do da do da Hope I get away with it, oh do da day. Something like that. Anyway, Road Autobahn. We're gonna go do some sketchy shit. Sweet. I've got the 80 series in for uh, she's her annual service and Alex is going to run through what we do for the 80 series Land Cruiser, some things to look out for, tip, tips and tricks. So what say we switch the cars over? Let's switch these cars around Bring and it over. Uh, get the 80 up in the air. Let's get it rocking. So let's pop it up. Alex, how are you going? Doing all right, Joe. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a service, change the oil, um, and run through, I don't know, what we're going to call it the 10 things you should look at when you're servicing, buying, whatever, your 80. Um, things like engine oil condition, air filter, spark plugs, belts, coolant, hoses, suspension, wheel bearings, tail shaft uni joints all those bits and pieces just things that you can check relatively easy on the ground on a jack whatever when you're um, gonna go have a look at one or looking to keep on top of yours cool so let's get this thing up and go from there all right so where will we start where will we get to and where will we finish so <clears> the first first thing you're gonna look at you're gonna put it up in the jacks I'm gonna put it up on the on the hoist, hoist. Um, because I don't like rolling around on the ground um, I'm going to drain the oil while I've got the oil draining. We are going to look at the wheel bearings, uh, the axle, sorry, not the axles, uni joints, the diff, diff. We're looking at the diff, the yep. The suspension arms and bushes. Um, we're probably going to have a quick look at your brakes while we're in there doing it as well. Um, just checking for leaks, all those things. And then once we've got all that sorted, we're going to bring it back down and we're going to double check 
radiator, hoses, belts, air filter, spark plugs. Um, we're gonna touch back on that whole heater hose and heater issue that is pretty common in these guys just because we can. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Sounds good, let's do it, let's get her up. First step, we're dropping the old oil out. Yep. Dropping the oil out of the sump. Sometimes even less. Um, if you're doing a lot of K's, obviously you're gonna need more K's between services because otherwise you'll be in every week. But you wouldn't really wanna push anything past 10,000 K's. Um, because, well, oil's cheap and engines aren't. The other big question is, I know you recommended, I know you recommended certain types of oil to use. What do you recommend for something, an old engine like this one for the 80 series? An old engine like this, I wouldn't go anything less than a 1540, just because that's, that's what they were specced with in their time. Um, and, you know, they're an old engine. You don't want thin, 530s, 520s, 030s, the engines aren't gonna handle it. It's not, it doesn't have enough viscosity in it for what the engine needs. Uh, some of them, they go to 2050s, 2060s, things like that. I've even heard things like 3070, but that's probably an engine that's getting long in the tooth. My personal one would be a, a 1540, maybe a 2050 if it's a, an older engine. Um, and it's a little bit rattly and needs a little extra love. Yeah. Right, so 1540 and what uh, quantity of oil do we need for an oil change? Oh, for a first time of doing really this? Good question. We might have to put that in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's seven. Because you've seven got liters. a big... I got a big... You've got yeah, a big beast of, of drum. ...of oil there that I just go for whenever I feel like it. Is there anything else you want to start checking on while we're draining that off? While we're draining that off, we'll go through and start, let's start at the back. We're yep. just going to give things a once over and see how we go. So we're going to check the diff out, make sure there's, make sure there's nothing leaking, nothing that jumps out, like everything's up there, the springs and everything are secure, nothing's falling apart, we're just giving all these bushes a bit of an eyeball, making sure nothing looks like it shouldn't. And hard bushes and everything. All these link pins. Show us the link pins so I can get a, a camera. Show us the link pins so I can get a camera shot. That's the link pin there. Yep. So you got your two top bushes and then it goes through your sway bar and there's a bush in the sway bar there. Yep. And then we've got on this nice and easy, bright yellow shocks. There's no oil coming out of them. They're still in there. Bushes aren't falling apart or anything. You can see the brakes from out here. Uh, check these bushes up here and control arms. And we're just going to work our way forward. Got a little weep at the speedo drive here. So, what's the speedo drive? Can you point that out? That's for me? the speedo drive. You see, it's just a little bit wet. We're probably just going to give that a wipe down while we're doing everything and keep an eye on it. Cause... So what would that be an indication of? Well, there's an O-ring in there yep. and the O-ring's probably just getting old and a little brittle. Yep. Um, might have shrunk, flattened out and just starting to weep past it. So nothing particularly bad. And while we're here, these are our unis and our tail shaft slide joints. There's your grease nipple for the slide and your grease nipple for the uni is there. And we're going to pump those full of grease, but see we've got no play or anything in those. And that backlash we were talking about in the diffs, 
is here. So right, see how me, it's... Uh, let me come around and get a shot of your mm. shoulder. That's better. See how it's got just a tiny amount of rotation. That's basically the teeth on the pinion gear and the teeth on the crown wheel. Yep. There's a tiny amount of play between it, which is what we need. Otherwise they're dragging the whole time and they're gonna wear themselves out. But it's not excessive. If you're getting, you know, if you were going from here to here before you're taking your weight out of it, then you've got too much backlash in your diff. Diff's gonna to need to be rebuilt or the backlash adjusted, things like that. So that's something to to look at with these older girls just because they've all got 100 and 200 and 300 and 500,000 Ks on them. 450,000 on this girl, yep. Got our front tail shaft in here. This one's a little bit harder to see. Come around to this side. The backlash in those, that's all good. Eyeball. Up here, we've got our suspension bushes here, don't knock that off. There, there. Up in front here, here. We got swivel hubs. Now these, on any given day, will have just a little bit of oil on them. Not too much, they shouldn't be hemorrhaging oil or anything like that, but there will be a little bit of oil because, well, there's oil in behind there and it keeps everything lubricated. Just like this one. It's got a little bit of oil and grease there. Nothing to really worry about. Uh, if it was dripping off dramatically, yeah, we'd be having to redo the hub seals and everything. But they are gonna have a small amount of oil coming from them because you've got a round thing and something trying to seal it. And then we've got our steering. Up here. Alright, I'll come around to the front. Come around to the front, here, Jack. Yep. So, so we're steering arms. Yep. Across here. It goes onto the body. Give that a little wipe too. From under here, we're just going to make sure that we've got no coolant leaks or anything giving us any issues. That's draining still. Just gonna bring Billy down a little bit so I can get in there at the oil filter because I am not 18 feet tall. So now we're gonna grab the oil filter just through here. Which is it's in a really difficult spot from this well, angle. It's, it's just in it's one of those hard. spots that you look at and go, really? That was the one you picked? All the room you have there. You, know, you, you can get at it, as you can see, by the way, I just sort of threw my arm in and got at it. Right. And you can get at it from above too, but... You know, so, with that, you just loosen it off now? I've just loosen it off. Draining the oil. So yeah. that it, yeah, that's it. So we dribble out the oil and not make a huge mess everywhere. We just make a lot of little small messes everywhere. And then... I don't know if I can see it from here. Yeah. Warning, this stuff is hot. Through many years of doing this, my fingers don't feel that much anymore, but don't burn yourself with the oil. So a good idea to let everything cool down. Well, yes and no, because you, still want it a bit you want it, that's it. The, the, the warmer it is, the better it drains out. You'll drain more of it out easier. So but do things like, that's your oil filter. So what are we looking at, model, etc. cetera? Uh, Z418 is Z4 the, the magic number, which is upside down, down for you guys there. That's right, Z418. Yep. Cool. Uh, now, note for the crowd, whenever you put a new oil filter on, drop of oil, just on the end of the finger, and then just wipe it on the seal. Just stops it all sticking and being hard to do. Uh, it doesn't have to have to be clean oil. You can dunk the end of your finger in there. It's just a little bit of lubrication between the oil filter seal and the engine. And the one, if I can see what I'm doing. Goodness me. You can just Amateur. lift up that flat if you can. There we go. There we go, we've got a bit of a view. Yeah, and I can see again. So that just screws straight on? It screws straight on. 
Sweet. And you just go till it touches, and it's not firm. You don't need to reef it, but you don't want it to come loose. So just that. So just hand tight. Just hand tight. Yep. Don't need to. Don't need to put all the force for the world in it. Just going to give it a little spray so we get any of the excess oil that's dribbled and whatever off there. Keep it all clean. No making mess everywhere. All those things. Um, also, public service announcement. Double check the, the face of the oil filter, whether the oil filter is going to screw on. Just make sure you haven't got an old seal or something on there. Because um, otherwise you can piss out all your oil when you start up a car. I'm just gonna lift Billy up and we'll put the sump plug back in, put a new washer on before we put the sump plug in and tighten that up. And grease the unis and everything while we're going. So just while we're looking at all this, what are some of the key things you've noticed with these old Land Cruisers that are common faults that go wrong? It's wear and tear stuff, but it's wear and tear stuff that just gets long in the tooth. Like these bushes here, not super easy to do necessarily because they're big. You gotta get the whole arm out to do them, so on and so forth. And they just get left to wear and wear and wear until they flop around and bang around. Um, like steering arms and things like that. Like that's your, um, your steering arm there. When they get play in them, See, we've got nothing in that. So if I was rocking this, and that's moving at the same point, otherwise you'd see the wheel was rocking and the steering arm is not moving at all. So this one's all good. Another little note, change the sump plug washer. All right, so what are we doing here? Let's go. Here I'm just popping off the old sump plug washer because it's stuck. Show us to the camera. It's the old one. It's not that old because I've changed it every time. Yep. But it's just, it's cheap insurance. Dude, I don't know. Stuff all, a couple bucks. Get it when you get your oil filter and your oil. And then pop a new one on. I might just come around the other side there. Yeah. Yep. Um, New sump plug washer on there, in here. Yeah, it's still dribbling, but it's only just dribbling. Do it up. Get your spanner on there. You'll feel the washer start to give a little bit and just tighten it. It's, it's firm, it's not super tight. You're not trying to strip the threads and rip everything apart in one go. You're trying to just make sure it's not gonna fall out on you. Sump plug washer helps because they bite and crush. Clean the oil up off that, clean any dribbles up. So, for in layman's terms, what is that solution you're spraying on? This is just brake cleaner. Don't believe the bottle, it's just a worth bottle, not worth brake cleaner. Brake parts cleaner, um, it just it does evaporates really quickly as you can see from the fact that it's cleaned and evaporated and gone almost um, evaporates quickly just cleans up your oil in bits and pieces Sweet. all right well we've got it up in the air we're just going to grease unis and pivots so we got our grease nipple here we got our grease gun here slide it on get it at the right angle so it goes in there nice Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. A little bit of grease comes out. That's all we need. Don't need to be pumping the living Jesus out of it. We got this one here. This is for the slide. So this one doesn't need as much. It's not going to pop out. We're just going to give it a few pumps. And that's enough because otherwise it's not going to let it move. It's going to be hard against it. Our other grease nipple here. That one's going to be a little hard for me to get from that side. So I'm going to spin it around here so I can get my fitting on. Unfortunately, a little hard for you guys to see, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. A little bit of grease, and there it's starting to come out. You can even hear it starting to come out when it starts to, it's like a little creaking, crackling noise. All right, this front one. Working 
get at it. That one does not. That does not have a greasable uni in there. Interesting. We'll have to look at that down the road. Alright, let's go to this very front one here. Let's pivot slide again. Put that sucker on there. Good to go. Good to go. All right, that's those. Um, some cars may have things like creasable joints in these, uh, in basically any shock bush. They sometimes make pins that are greasable. On this one, we don't have any of that, so we're not worrying about that. Um, other cars that have leaf rear suspension, you have greasable shackle bushes and things. Again, we don't have that, so we're not looking at that currently. Um, yeah, now we're gonna bring it down. We're gonna do the tire pressures on the way through and check those other bits and pieces for you. Do a little research. Look into what you're looking for for signs of good versus bad wear and play with your tire pressures a little bit. As I say, this size car with these size tires, I've found about 40 pound works well, especially when you do things like drive to Queensland and whatnot. Those tires are we running here? 285716. 285,716. Correct. Sweet. Are we filming? Nope. Okay. Billy happens to hold eight liters and I happen to have one of these super fancy funnels that makes my life super easy and all you really have to worry about is not letting it overfill out the top. Pump out some more, another four liters. So we're working on roughly eight liters. Eight liters. Eight? The cap back on before we forget. Now we put the oil in, drop the dipstick down. <laughs> when you put the oil in, you gotta let it run for a minute just until the oil pressure light turns off. It only takes about three to five seconds. Generally let it run a couple of seconds longer just for just for and then we wipe our dipstick, dip it and check it and we are just so you can see it all bar bang on the full mark there. By the time it sits for 10 minutes or whatever, that is gonna be right on the full mark. So that is what we're setting our oil level to. Now, those other things we like to check. Get my torch. Start over this side with the air filter. Clip, clip, and one sneaky one on the back here. Make your vacuum lines off so you don't bust them. Whenever you're pulling these hoses off, twist. Twist and pull. If you just pull them, they will break. If they are hard, and inflexible, just replace them. They go from there to there. You can buy a whole reel of the stuff for like 10 bucks. And this screw on top, wind the wind nut off. Don't wind it off at a million miles an hour until it flies off because then you'll lose it. Put it there for safekeeping. Lift this back up. And we've got Billy's air filter, which we replaced last time because that is pretty well clean as a whistle. I'm gonna give it a quick blowout anyway. Because... Obvious question, that's just getting all the dust and stuff just out. Just all the dust and all and the loose stuff out. Um, when they're a bit older, as I say, we replaced this one last time and it looks like it hasn't done many, many Ks in between, but you'll get like black spots or whatever from where the air comes in and then goes through. 
you just give it a light blowout, you can get an extra service out of them every now and then. If it's full of dust and you pick it up and shake it and there's just dirt everywhere, just throw it in the bin. It is done. So to get it the spark plugs? You gotta take this cover off. Oh, wow. It's in-depth stuff. Just gonna pop that. Breathe the hose off there for the, for the cover. You're gonna check them all, which I'm gonna judge from what I see, because I know I've done these. There's another cover at the back, and you'll have to take the crossover pipe off. As I say, I'm gonna judge from what I see, knowing I have done these spark plugs. Pull them up, nice, straight, and out. Get a spark plug socket. Right socket. Correct socket. It's amazing what the right tool does for the job. All right. Crack them, one is out. All right, having a look at these, let's get some more light on the subject. They are getting a little bit crusty, but not too bad still. Depending on who you are and what you are, everyone's gonna tell you different things. You should replace that, that'll be fine, blah, blah, blah. Looking at it, it's still pretty flat, but I tell you, after this trip, we will be replacing these suckers. So for now, it's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna pop that back in. Right. When you do your spark plugs up, you do not crank them. Put them in. That's enough pressure. One thumb. Pretty sure on the box NGK say put it in until it touches and then it's a quarter turn or something like that. They make spark plugs, they know stuff. Put these covers back on, line that back up. to our tips and things to check. While we're here, belts. I'm gonna climb back up on here because I have short legs. We've replaced Billy's belts pretty recently. But we've got three belts here, two main belts, alternator, water pump, crankshaft, and then the AC belt down here. I'm just gonna double check the tension, make sure they're not cracked or anything like that. It's a little hard to show you with the camera, but we can see on these belts, especially on here on the tooth belts, there's no cracks or anything. And they've got just enough slack. We can just turn them. They're not super loose or anything like that. So they're gonna be good for now. Back up here, that is still a little bit warm, but it's not hot, hot, so we're gonna be okay. Just gonna pop our radiator off, nice and slow so that we don't get anything. Water level's good, right there at the top. Right there at the top. Top that up. Our overflow bottle here. Just between the full and the low line, given that we've still got a little bit of warmth in the radiator, that's about where we want it. Ideally, it will be about low when it's cold and about full when it's hot. So somewhere between those two is sweet. Wash your bottle. This is where the magic happens for your windscreen wipers. We're gonna fill that up while we're here too. And then we're just gonna top up the brake fluid as well. Just because that's a touch low. And I believe in a couple of services we're gonna be due for brakes, front brakes on Billy. When we do the front brakes, we're gonna replace the brake fluid as well. 
for now, we're just gonna to top it up. And Billy is, being a Toyota, she will be dot three fluid only. Let me bring this over here where you can read it. Use only dot three. This is important. Dot three and dot four do not match, except for when you get those crazy ones like Penrite, which make dot three and four compatible in the same bottle. But we're just gonna just top it up a bit so that we're above that low line. Just like that. As I say, we're gonna need new pads in the front of Billy, probably in a couple of services. So we're not too stressed. We don't need to be right at the max max line. Your max max line should be pretty well when your pads are new. Um, everything's new. It wants to be at max max. But you wanna make sure that you are above the minimum line so you don't have any issues with running out of brake fluid anyway. The other thing, radiator hoses. Top radiator hose. This one's relatively new, but we've got good clamp, nice and tight. Hose is flexible still, nice, soft, supple. You can move it. It doesn't feel like it's creaking, groaning, breaking. Then we come over this side, right down the bottom here. Bottom radiator hose, same deal, just a little bit harder to show you. Um, done the spark plugs, bits and pieces. Now, that heater, heater hose, heater core, Thing that gets deleted magically on a lot of these. I know we touched on it last time, but spots. These is your heater control valve. Your heater hoses go down and into the body. We got the top one there, and the other one is down here. It's actually hard to see. It's down there somewhere. Um, sorry. One here. One on the far side there. If these have been deleted and this has been joined to this, you will have no heater. In winter, it will be very cold. It's probably because the heater core inside the car has leaked and they're a real headache to replace. From memory, you have to pull the dash and everything out of them. Not fun, not what you want to do, but having no heater is not the ideal way to go on with your life either. Um, I think that's about all our tips and tricks for this one. Sweet! Alright, that's it. We finished the service. I'd like to say a big massive thanks to Alex from Thornley Motor Repairs. There's a the logo up there, thornleymotorrepairs.com.au. Hope this helps out you guys. Just some ideas on what to look for. And... And, on cue, the water jet going. <laughs> so come see Alex, a professional. Jump on his website. I'm sure he's more than happy to help you out with some tips and tricks. Happy to give you once, your some advice. once over. Bring it on in. So on and so forth. Thanks for watching. Please hit that uh, like button. Subscribe to the channel. Help support the channel. That'd be awesome. But most of all, have an absolutely fantastic day. Thanks, guys. See you next time, guys. Wanna move my feet?